different words for the same thing. Surrender, devotion, surface, love, something like that. Like I said, we're always surfing because we're never separate from all that is. So every moment that your being is present, you're surfing something. It's like surfing a dish. You have something to surf. At any given moment, if you exist as being here, if you exist, which apparently you do, then at any given moment of that existence, you're surfing something to life, to all that is. You're offering something. What are you offering? You're offering your present state of being. That's what you're offering. Your present state of being, your present attitude, your present being, your present way of being is what you're serving. It's what you're giving to the rest of yourself, which we call out there, but it's simply the rest of yourself. The best way to serve is to enjoy yourself. The best way to serve is to be in that state of enjoyment. It doesn't have to be ecstatic all the time. It can even be depressed. But can you find the sweetness? If your mood is just a little bit down, can you find the sweetness of enjoyment? Can you find the sweetness of yourself, of your own presence within that mood? If you have ideas in your head of trying to change your mood to a different mood, then you're actually only perpetuating the initial stages of the mood. You're giving it value. You're giving it meaning, which it doesn't inherently have. Anything that comes up is bound to disappear. It is bound to change to something else. Moods don't last. And so when we emphasize our present mood as being negative or being positive, when we emphasize it as something, when we turn it into a thing, that's when that mood solidifies. That's when that state of being seems to become more real, more vivid, more there, more solid, more static, more changeless. If you don't judge your present mood by any standards, by any words, by any labels, just no judgment, you become non-judgment toward your own state of being. Then your state of being shifts from being tied to the mood you're in to a deeper reality, to a deeper state of being, of enjoying yourself as well as its connection to the rest of yourself. If you're not trying to change because you're not labeling your initial state of mind, you're not labeling, you're not describing your initial mood, then it doesn't turn into anything. It just remains this open presence that you don't have to do anything with. And the allowance of it, by becoming the allowance of your mood, you're actually merging with it and you're transforming it into the state of being of allowance and allowance itself can never be depressed for a very long period of time so by allowing whatever it is you're actually giving it space to transform into that which it was already about to transform into but you're just speeding up that process because you're not getting stuck in the label of depression or tiredness or exhaustion or just having your period or whatever it is so you'll notice that the moment you judge yourself and your present state of being, the moment you judge your mood, your state of being, takes on the shape of your mood. Whereas if you're not judging your mood, the mood starts to change into your state of being. Does that make sense? The difference between mood and state of being. So in the allowance, what starts to happen, what you start to realize, what you start to experience directly is that non-duality, is that inseparability which is love. Love is the inseparability of all things, which is already the case. We can simply tune into that or not. We can keep judging ourselves or take that two to five second breather where we just take the pause, we stop the mind for a few seconds, and we recognize in the space of awareness which remains, we see that our mood is already included. It's already allowed to be there, otherwise it wouldn't be there. The space already allows for the contents to be as they are. You cannot accept that or not accept that. It's already allowed. It's already part of existence. It's already part of that aware being, which we all are. And if you see that, you become that. Whatever you see, you be. Whatever you see, you become. So when you place your attention, what you choose to recognize 
If it is the labeling and the judging, then that's what your state of being becomes. That's what it embodies. Whatever you see is what you embody. So if instead you see, you decide to see the inseparable ground of being from which all these emotions never leave, from which all these moves spring, like the tablecloth can be pulled in many different shapes, many different sizes, many different mountain tops. It can even form two individuals and start looking at itself and pretend it's separate. Oh, hello. Oh, what's your name? Tablecloth. Oh, wait, that was my name. Okay, let's come up with different names. So you see the tablecloth, the tablecloth is never separate, even though it pretends to play separation, it plays separation. And that goes for all of us here. We're not really separate, only on the level of appearance, only on the level, not even on the level of appearance. Even appearances are, by their very essence, inseparable. They are that one tablecloth of being. But when we label, when we start to think about things, about separate things, that's when it starts to solidify into the sense of separation. But inherently so, there is no sense of separation in anything. It's only due to our descriptions, due to our stories, due to our way of seeing things, our point of view, that things appear separate. But all that appears separate is not separate. Even the sense of separation is just another whoop, shape of the one inseparable being. So even the sense of separation doesn't need to be gotten rid of because the moment you judge your sense of separation, you become the sense of separation. When you allow the sense of separation, you remain in the frequency of allowance, which is closer to the natural state than the ideas about separation. And so you feel more enjoyment, you feel more aliveness, you feel more connection because your present frequency, your present state of being that you're embodying is closer in its alignment to the truth of unity. So anything that's closer to truth, or at least to what you should be experiencing as truth for yourself at this moment, feels as more enjoyable to you, feels as more refreshing, more nourishing, more fulfilling to you. Anything that doesn't feel fulfilling to you means you're holding on to an idea, belief, or description about something that does not resonate with that underlying knowing that you've already tapped into of inseparability, of love, of unity, of service, of compassion, of authenticity, etc. To recognize that all appearances are of the one essence, that recognition allows you to embody the love that you're recognizing. The love is already there, the inseparability is already there. But by recognizing it, by seeing it, you allow yourself to be it. Wherever you're looking at, that's what your whole sense of being goes towards, usually. So true service or devotion or enjoyment or surrender or love is the disappearance of emphasizing a difference between yourself and the rest of yourself. So again, what we call others or the outside world is simply the rest of yourself. You have yourself and the rest of yourself. So you're just looking through one point of view, but all of that are the other points of view which are also part of your being. 